We are live now. Oh, <laughs> here we Hello, are, everybody. <laughs> What's going on? Good, good, good. Hi. Say hi to say hi in the chat if you can hear our audio. Most people here, Jimmy, are probably wondering who the heck is this guy with Jimmy. Everybody wants to know what this Maker Mob stuff is all about. They don't know who I am, and I think we shouldn't tell them. <laughs> <laughs> I love you guys. So we'll figure it out. <laughs> don't Google me though. You don't want I'm to look at on my channel. I don't see the live. Is it not live yet on my channel? Or... It should be. It should. Be. It, may, it might be delayed. It might be delayed like thirty seconds or a minute. Oh, I see something happening here. Yeah. It should. It, may, it might be delayed. Oh, it might be hey, delayed. Like... there it is. There it is. I can see. Uh, if you guys can hear us, yeah, I see it. Sounds great. Sounds great. Um, if you don't know who I am, which a lot of you, if you're on Jimmy's channel, uh, don't know, don't know me. My name is Adam Henkel. I'm with the Makers Mob. Uh, we do these live hangouts and, and interviews and stuff all the time inside the Makers Mob for our members. Recently, we've been kind of throwing these out publicly. So this one is is public with Jimmy. Jimmy, so good to have you here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you to the Makers Mob for always pushing me to be more social when it comes to live streams and stuff. Hey, you know what? You, you do really well as far as Instagram. I, oh, I, I mean, I'm captivated by your stories. <laughs> right on. I, I've been kind of holed up. I should have done more stories today announcing what we're doing now. But uh, obviously, I've been busy. We're working on a television project and we're literally working like 12, 13 hours a day, all day. Crazy. It um, happens right in my backyard. And sometimes I walk out of my house and I don't walk back into my house until 13 <laughs> hours later. It's only 300 feet away. That's wild. Yeah. Um, as, as far as your stories on Instagram go, I don't think I've ever been uh, as as intrigued watching somebody walk through Walmart and and look at <laughs> <laughs> and look at random things as I am when I'm watching your stories. Everybody loves my Walmart stories. Me just scooping <laughs> off and just like picking apart pop culture and pop graphics. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah. Fine. I really do. I'm gonna take my glasses off because all I see is my screen. There you go. Can you see the screen now? Um, it's a little blurry, but I think as long as I don't have to read any any actual thing. Well, I'll, if I do have to read, I got to put my glasses back. Uh, I can read to you. That's how this. That's how this can go. I'll be. I'll be your eyes. <laughs> um, so I mean, we'll we'll kind of get right into it. Before we get into just chatting, hanging out, we're gonna do a bunch of Q and A. Um, so if you got questions, get ready to put those in the chat in a little bit. Don't put them in yet because they'll probably get swallowed up by the live stream chat that's going on. Um, but before we get into just like hanging out and, and talking, I'm just going to give a couple updates for those of you who are members of the Makers Mob. Um, just to let you know what's going on. This will be just a couple minutes and then we'll get back to chatting with Jimmy. You good with that, Jimmy? Yeah, go for it. Tell All everybody right. what you're about. Cool. Um, so let's go to a little slide here. We got this slide. So uh, that's us today. You didn't even know Jimmy, but we were together before doing a live chat. It's news to you. <laughs> uh, we got some announcements for the Makers Mob. That's Ron Burgundy, everyone's favorite comedian. Um, we got the Kamiko Challenge coming up uh, with Neil Paskin from Pask Makes. He's going to be walking through uh, how to make uh, Kamiko panels, and we're going to incorporate it into a project. So it's going to be a multiple week series where there's the course learning how to make the jigs. Uh, for the Kamiko panels, making the Kamiko patterns themselves, and then how to incorporate that into a small box project that we're going to do uh, together. So that's coming up. Registration for that closes June 13th, uh, which is in a week and a bit. And then we're going to start that thing on June 18th um, is when we're going to release the first part of the course. So uh, Jimmy, have you done much Kamiko? No, you know, I haven't. If I was going to do that, I probably would set up a CNC file and then everybody would <laughs> There you go. Uh, <laughs> we've got live replays available. So there's a lot of lives we do within the Makers Mob community. Um, a couple weeks ago, we were live with the Third Coast Craftsman. Last week, I was live with uh, Liam Hoffman, a blacksmith. And amazing. Uh, amazing blacksmith. Sa yeah, amazing. Samurai Carpenter. Um, speaking of blacksmith, uh, Liam has multiple tutorials on blacksmithing in the Makers Mob. This is probably one of my favorite ones uh, in there. He's literally breaks down. It's about a three hour tutorial, how to build these bearded uh, hatchets from pretty much just a block of steel and how to make him shape the handle and everything. Uh, it's a full in depth tutorial, which, which is pretty awesome. Um, in the Makers Mob, we got, if you don't know what we are or who we are, uh, we have 
probably well over 100 uh, tutorials and projects and plans available inside from different YouTube makers like Jimmy, uh, the Samurai Carpenter, John Peters, John Heise, Neil Paskin, Liam Hoffman, all these guys uh, have projects and plans available. These are some of the most recent ones. Uh, we do monthly contests, we go live, uh, do hangouts. We It's just a great community to be a part of. So uh, that's a bit about who we are. John Heise is a small toolbox coming up soon. Uh, tutorials and plans going to be available for that in the next week or so. Um, and we do this monthly project, which uh, I wanted to just do a quick announcement. We we wrapped it up this last week, and I wanted to announce the winner, if that's cool, Jimmy, uh, of the project of the month. I've got it picked. I've got it ready to go. Each month, we do this project where you submit your work for that month, so something that you built. Uh, this month, we are giving away this mallet and half-inch uh, Japanese chisel from Lee Valley. Uh, to the winner and this month the winner is i don't know if he's on here watching or not but i'm sure he'll find out somehow uh i'll let him know the winner of this month's project of the month contest is rich phillips uh for this cherry oh, well med done. medicine cabinet yeah it's pretty uh pretty beautiful it's got some through tenons some dovetail uh drawn around the drawers uh made out of solid cherry just a great project and rich you were taken home the mallet and half inch Japanese chisel. So we'll get that off to you. I'll connect with you uh, in the next week or so to get you that. Uh, and, and a Maker's Mob t-shirt like this one. Nice. The one I'm wearing. Um, I think that's it. I did, before we get into stuff, I did want to, I have, actually, let's get an update from you first and then I'll, I'll, I'll pull with back. Me? Yeah, with you. Let's get an update with you. What's going on in your life? Uh, we are, uh, I, I, my buddy, Mike Santuli is watching and he's making jokes about me blowing up boxes. That's an old joke about, I used to watch, uh, I used to watch the, uh, Mythbusters and I used to get angry because all they did was make plastic boxes and blow them up. So that's a Mike, Mike and I just goofing with me, but right now I'm working on a television show. I can't say only because they asked me not to say, but it's a streaming network that's going to, uh, air the show in probably six months from now. And it's me and a good great cast of guys uh it's derek from malden it's uh graz graz makes uh, paul jackman and pat lap and we are having fun making fun stuff on the show it's uh the show's like a little bit of a, a kooky premise if you get on board you'll have fun and uh but the good thing is they're really going to highlight all the different things that we do and make and we're going to be making Lots of different things in a variety of ways. So every week we have a project that we focus on, <clears throat> and then we present the project to the audience at the end. And Sound uh, it's a lot of fun. We've, we've been having a lot of fun. Sounds like fun. My question about it is, um, is it a requirement to be on the show to have a big beard? Everybody's got a beard. I trim my beard and nobody noticed. Like everyone's beard is growing because like every week we're like intermingling shows and we're not allowed to. They're like, oh, you could, uh, you know, when we get on episode 104, everybody could trim their beard. And then all of a sudden it's like, oh, wait, can we go back to 103 just to do these pickups? And then we'll start 104 and then we're going to do a piece for 105. So in the same day, we're like all in the same, pre you know, so we can't, we haven't had like a clean break to trim. Yeah. So everybody's all grovelly about the. I, I trim just like nobody notices. <laughs> but it is. It is a thing. It's been talked about several times. <laughs> that's awesome. Um, now you were mentioning earlier about a show that's airing. The NBC. Oh right, right. And then tonight, uh, season three of Making It. I'm I, I, so many TV shows. You know, I can't keep track of them. Oh no, my uh, God. that's a problem all of us have, Jimmy. Right? <laughs> no, Making It season three is airing tonight for the first time. Um, if anybody actually still has a television set. I don't know if it streams anymore or if it streams. I guess it's on Hulu, but I don't know if it's on. I don't know. I don't know. If it's not on YouTube, it doesn't exist in my world. And any kind of any show that's good, there's clips of it on YouTube. And that's how I watch any television show. I watch it in like like bite sized pieces. So yeah. if you ask me if I've seen Breaking Bad, I've seen like a lot. I've seen like probably about 30 minutes of Breaking Bad in two minute clips. And yeah. well, that's that's enough. It's a great show, though. Yeah, well, it's great. The clips I saw are amazing. <laughs> um, so I have a couple little clips myself or little photos that I was hoping to. There's a couple that I want to, uh, I need more info from that I found. Um, Hi, Raina. So I'm going to, I'm going to show you these. And then there's one that, that I'm, I'm hoping it impresses you, but. Oh, is this, is this like, uh, is this like first we feast when he like goes through the Instagram? That's a funny. Uh, not really. This is, okay. this is way different. It's not okay. <laughs> nearly as cool as that. <laughs> Um, so my first question is, uh, 
What's the what's going on here? Can you give us a play by play of what's happening here? Oh, <laughs> where did you find this? <laughs> this is it's Pat an actual. Lap. It's a GIF. It's it's me and Pat Lap having fun. Pat's on the show, and he's absolutely a hilarious. He's he's an absolutely hilarious physical comedian, and he's he's he taped this thing one day, and I didn't know what he was doing, but he put this gift together where Pat walks up to me and says, "It's Jimmy, it's Jimmy, it's Jimmy," and then I get mad and push him away. Okay, so, so it's like it's a first person film that goes to like a third person to like a wide. It's an interesting little piece of filmmaking that he did when we were in Canada. This is so the thing that I found really funny about this. So I looked this up on a gift site, right? Look to the right of the gifts. This is what they say are, are related gifts. Look at the random <laughs> images. <laughs> Something with, I don't know what the top one is. Looks like some, maybe a Star Wars thing with laser yeah, beams. Looks, yeah, it looks like lightning. Some, just just random. I, I mean, I so wanted to know. If you search my name in gifts, that shows up? Yeah, that's the, that's the first thing that shows up. The only time I ever saw that is when Pat emailed it to me and said, this is the thing we did in Canada last week. And then I never saw it again until now. I was, I was curious. I'm like, there's got to be a gif of, of Jimmy, and that's apparently it. My my buddy uh, my buddy did a bunch of gifs of like my logo and stuff jiggling and stuff on uh, on um, Instagram. And lately, I noticed they're not there. I got to ask them what happened to them. I do, they were there, and then if you search my name in the little gif section, they used to pop up, and I noticed they they're not there. Do we have 13 pictures to go through? This will be fun. Go ahead. No, this isn't. No, sorry. It's not 13 <laughs> pictures. It's, we got three. So the next one, the next one is, so I know you're, you're quite uh, a MacGyver. You're very uh, innovative. And this is actually a personal, uh, it's a photo of something that, that happened to me. So four years ago, I bought a house and we kind of did some minor renos on it. One of the things is we replaced all the door hardware. Um, I pulled the striker plate off of a door and- what? This is what I found. Sorry, replaying that for some reason. This is what I found. Can you see that? Oh, that's amazing. Somebody put a bunch of staples and then a snap to try and raise the, the striker up out of the uh, the sunken door. Yeah, I've always been impressed with this. Not like it, it was, it's two different, completely different objects, but they essentially weaved together staples. That's so wild. To create you know a that, washer like, that, or like a shim. That looks like somebody probably like uh, probably took like a little stack of staples that might have been stuck together. Yeah, and like kind of hung them on the screw or hung them on the nail and just said, "Let's see what happens if it jams <laughs> close together." It's totally something I would do. And the buttons from some looks like just from some jeans, like a. That's like, hilarious. Yeah, I mean, that I've always I've always been impressed with it. Yeah, I know it's funny. That reminds me of a time when I was at a client's house and I was trying to I was trying to uh, impress her. And I was like, you want to see a little trick? Because we just taken a picture off the wall and she was painting the room. And there was a oh, hole. Oh, look at that. I oh, my God. That. We'll get back to that. And there was a hole There was a hole from where the nail was. And I kind of dusted off the hole. And I, I go, you want to see a trick? She said, yeah, sure. So I put a piece of scotch tape over the hole and painted it. And she went, but there's still a hole under the scotch tape. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, but you can't see it. She goes, but I know it's there. She's like, can you take the tape off and fill the hole? <laughs> oh, my gosh. So I think of, I think of her when I look at this. I'm like, if I try and fix that, then she would like take it off and go. But wait, there's not wood under there anymore. There's staples in a button underneath there. <laughs> yeah. All right, you like my trick. You saw the photo of the next one, but this is yep. this. I found this funny, and I don't know if you even know of this. Um, I know exactly what that was. I know exactly what yeah. that was. So you know that for personal use, you can purchase this photo for 1999. <laughs> yeah, that is uh, that is. Me and my brother walking into Fox Television Studios to promote, um, to promote uh, Dirty Money 12 years ago when I was about 25 pounds lighter. And we were on like, I don't know, the Upper East Side, like maybe 50th Street, 59th Street or something like that, 54th Street. I don't know. And we walked into a television studio. Then in a few minutes, we were with uh, everybody on like the, the morning Fox show. And that so, was so, so, so my question though is, like, is this, is this, does this sell? I have no idea. You know, there's like, so many who's, things. Who's, that, who's selling this? And I is, have no idea. Is well, someone, is anyone out there in this, watching this, uh, has anyone else, anyone purchased this for 1999 <laughs> for personal use? I'm curious. I'll I, tell you a couple of funny paparazzi <laughs> stories. There have been a few times where John and I like show up at interview 
setups like this, for instance, and then we did Carson Daly one time, and a similar thing happened when we left Carson Daly, is they just – there's always so-called celebrities coming and going from these interview in and outdoors at these places, and so there are paparazzi that just stand there all day long taking pictures of whoever it is. So if it's somebody going in that door, there's it's somebody going to get interviewed. And especially if you come out of like, a, you know, these days it would be an Uber, but if you come out of like a black, uh, you know, uh, uh, in New York City, there would be a black Lincoln. And so they take pictures of who, whoever they are. And then they'll literally take your picture and go, what's your name? I go, my name's Jimmy Dress. <laughs> and then they write it down on a card. So it's just a way for these like photogs to just farm, you know, images of celebrities that, you know, let's say if I got famous for either saving a baby or, you know, murdering somebody, the picture would be worth something to somebody. Yeah. Crazy. I don't think either of those two things are going to happen anytime soon. I was tempted to buy it for nineteen ninety nine, but I yeah. mean, a funny story when me me and my brother did a show called Dirty Money literally twenty nineteen years ago, and we did like a red carpet for FX Network, and there was a couple of really big shows on at the time, and Zach Galifianakis had a show on some of, and so everybody walked down the red carpet, and there was like a hundred photographers, and every time people in front of us walked, everybody was snapping, snap, 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 snap. Me and John walked down the red carpet because like there was a publicist that said, okay, wait, like we had to wait. It was ridiculous. Then we walked and nobody took our picture except for one person. <laughs> one camera click. And that guy's just like, and I looked at him and he just went, just in case. Yeah. It's exactly what he said. You, you never know. We were laughing know. like we're laughing now. I was like, this yeah. is so, nobody knows who we are and yeah. nobody even knows what show we're on. Um, speaking of nobody knows who you are, if nobody knows who I am and you joined after I introduced myself, my name is Adam Henkel and I'm with the Makers Mob. That's who I am. Um, we're going to get into some Q&A stuff here really quick. So if you've got questions, make sure you're ready to put it in have, the chat. I have one question. Sean Beckner wrote, I just saw it. He asked if I have a handcuff key on me. And I always have a handcuff key in my back pocket. And this morning when I threw my jeans in the laundry and I hit start and I walked away, I was like, damn, my handcuffs key is in the back of those jeans I just threw in there. <laughs> so, yes, I have a handcuff key on me almost all the time. But today it's in my dirty jeans in the dryer right now. Oh, my gosh. In the dryer. So uh, one of the cool things about being a part of the Makers Mob, Jimmy, is that we invite some of our members to join us to ask questions live with Makers on our lives. Um, oh, I have two right now who are in the waiting room that oh, are cool. Bring them in. really cool, uh, really cool guys that are members of the Makers Mob. They want to ask a question. We're going to start with Nathan Fought because I know that he is on call right now. He's a linesman in northern Pennsylvania. Oh, my and God. And he's, uh, he's actually in his truck. So, Nathan, we're going to pull you on. Nathan, are you driving? Are you yeah, driving? I'm, uh, just getting ready to uh, drive home here in a few minutes. <laughs> What's going on? What's up, park, Nathan? Get around the parking lot here. How are you guys doing? Good, 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 good. You're in Pennsylvania? Yep, in Pennsylvania. Right on. You look too young to have a lineman job. How old are you? <laughs> I'm uh, 35, but I, I do look young, but... You are right. I am fairly young to be a man, so. <laughs> right on. <laughs> um, Nathan. So yeah, I'm uh, just leaving a hospital outage that I was on. So I uh, just got them all squared away and got quick fixed up a lot quicker than I thought it was going to take. So I didn't know if I was going to make it tonight. But I just wanted to ask you about your uh, flip-top uh, design workbench. My buddy actually made the same uh, design that you did for the top that rotates. I don't uh -huh. know if that uh, if that makes sense or not, but he built one, and his like it's pretty sturdy, but it seems like it could be uh, better designed. And I was curious how happy you are with your flip top that you've built. Uh, I love the flip top when I don't crowd up the the empty space with with tons of junk. Like right now, I have a refrigerator on my flip top, and. Uh, to, to flip it to the to, to the planer, I have to move the refrigerator. <laughs> so yeah. the flip tops are good when you absolutely never put anything on them. I think what's a better option is uh, what you see a lot of guys do is they don't necessarily have flip tops, but they have two options. So if you have six tools, well, my th my mine is a three top flip top. You have uh, three tools on underneath and three tools on top. So this way you're not you're not tempted to just load the top of the table up with a bunch of junk. But uh, I love the flip top, and every time I look at it, I think i got to move all the stuff off the top of it one day so I can use it again. And I've worked with uh, I've worked with Weaver Leather, who has an amazing steel factory, because Weaver okay. Leather does a lot of uh, farm equipment. 
uh, you know, yep. with another business that they do. And uh, Weaver is going to be making the the single flip top steel table. So it just flips okay. 180. It goes, you know, so you put a machine, it flips up from the front and it goes back down. And we're designing okay. it so that you could buy three or four of them and attach them in a row. Wonderful. I like the idea of a steel flip top versus a wood. I'm not sure yeah. if your personal one is steel or wood. Yeah, I did a, I did a three top. I did a three top steel flip top and it's much. Okay, it's, he did it's, three it's, top uh, with out of wood, just two by four lumber. Yeah, it, 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 it makes it obviously a lot, lot more bulky. But, yeah. But well, yeah, I love the design. I've, I've thought about it myself, but I'm getting ready to move into a new uh, store or into a new home and new space. So I'm trying to do a mental thoughts of how to set up my shop mm -hmm. it's it's not something i'm looking forward to is moving from point a to point b and then point b being just uh no inflation no wire nothing it's just studs and walls and yeah. i'm like man i gotta do all this electric wa uh, work and then insulate and so i believe you're from the north as well so you know a little bit about the cold and having to deal with the, yeah yeah we just came out of the winter that doesn't seem to want to end it's a uh, pain <laughs> in the ass yeah it's 97 degrees uh, last the beginning of last week, and then uh, later in the week it hit 40 degrees, and now we're back up yeah. to 80. Yeah, it's crazy weather. It's crazy weather. All I know is I'm just happy that with this for a minute, and and I'm extremely happy with my in floor heating. I highly recommend anybody in the Northeast or or you know in a okay. cold climate get in floor heating. It's 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 revolutionary. I mean it it's been around, but it's revolutionary for my life. Yeah, I, I know the Third Coast Craftsman that we did uh, a live with a little while ago about his shop. He did the, he did that as well in his shop, yeah. and he's just loving it. Yeah, it's yeah. great. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. awesome. Thanks, well, Nathan, thank you for joining much. us. I appreciate it. Thanks, buddy. Yeah. Thanks for the love and support. Appreciate Thanks, it. Thanks, Nathan. We'll see you later, yeah. bud. There he is, Nathan Fott. He's been a member since day one of the Makers Mob, which is pretty awesome. So he's he's kind of tuning, tuning in all the time. Um, get your questions ready. we got another uh, – we got another member of the Makers Mob that's going to join us here, Kevin McCann. Uh, Kevin, we're going to bring you on right now. Let's see. There you are, Kevin. Oh, Shoot. what's up, Kevin? Hey. What's up, buddy? You got oh, not too much. Have we Jimmy met? You look familiar. Have we met? I wish, but no, we haven't. Just oh, because God. he has a beard, Jimmy? That's right. It's the beard, <laughs> right? You look it's, like every guy at every one of my meetups. That's it's, it's the beard, and it's, it's my... Um, it's my elderly fanboy uh, stuff going on here with regards to uh, to you. So no, bow down you. to you. You know, the man, the myth, the maker. Um, you. So you're a maker. You're not a woodworker. You're not a metal worker. You're not a leather worker. So what's your favorite medium to work with? And well, why? you know, um, I guess if if I had to say anything, I'm like mostly intrigued with machining and metal work. That's kind of my favorite when I get a chance to really dig into a machining project because I don't get a chance to practice that as much as I'd like to. And so when I'm working on a project and it turns into a machining project, I'm real excited because suddenly I'm, I get to use all these skills that I'm not 100% sure that I'm aware of. You know, and it's like, oh, I know, oh, I've seen A-Bomb do this and I know I have all the tools to do it. So I jump right in and, you know, that's that's lately like the most rewarding is when I'm able to do machining projects. Cool. In general. Uh, wood, you, there's sometimes when I gear up for woodworking, I totally get frustrated. I'm like, I don't know where my glue bottle is, and it's like I don't know where the sharp chisel box is. I have chisels, but none of them are sharp except for the couple that I hide. And, you know. <laughs> well, it doesn't show in the videos, so I always learn lots of neat little tricks there. So, um, yeah, you. I love watching your videos more for um, how you're making it versus what you're making that kind of stuff. Oh, because I'm you. always finding finding little tricks, uh, you know, for things that you've done hey, in your uh, resin soap dish video. Uh, you made the the mold out of acrylic and the bondo and that. So when you take on a project like that, do you just wing it or do you come up with a plan? What's your thought process in that? Well, it's funny because uh, that project I, I had been planning on doing a CNC model the entire week. And then when I got right down to it and I was kind of doing in between stuff at the shop with the TV show going on in the background, I was like, this, I, I took for a minute, I thought like, wow, if this was 20 years ago, I'd just make this against like a piece of acrylic in my basement with bondo. And I was like, you know what? That'd be an interesting technique to show instead of just running into a CNC or a 3D printout of it. So that's why I did it. And it wasn't until I was actually in the moment. I was like, okay, now I'm going to fire up the laser and cut out the logo out of like a piece of cardboard or something just to give the raised letters on the back. 
Yeah. And then it occurred to me, I was like, if I just smear Bondo into the bar of soap, I'm going to get the raised letters right there. Let me just do that. And yeah, so it sort of <laughs> seems to be a theme of stop overcomplicating it. It doesn't have to be as yeah. complicated as, as some people make it. And a lot of the things that I pick up from the videos that, that you're doing is that there's, you know, you just do this, right? So, yeah. And the thing is, it's like I said, it's, uh, you know, so many, so much of it is in the moment. It's hard, like, because right now we're working on this TV show project and they keep looking at me and they're like, how are we going to make this? I go, I don't know. Let's stop making it. And we'll see where it goes. And they, they, the heads explode. They can't take that. And uh, so sometimes I just lie. I'm like, we're going to do this, that, and the other thing. And then we start making it. And I'm like, actually, I'm changing my plan. And they're like, oh, really? We like that. Because they like to see. Like, <laughs> I don't feel like so bad about my, uh, about my thought process then. Because it usually starts with I, with, I need this. And then I start cutting. And then after yeah. I've cut a few pieces, I go, well, I actually, I need something there. So I'll, I'll make it a little bit bigger, a little bit smaller. And, and 100%. 100%. It, so. like, that's like we just made this whole apparatus out of metal. And like everyone's like, what is all this? What is all this? Why do you need all this? I was like, I don't know. That's just how I got started. But then once we installed that into the bigger project, me and Derek just went right back in and cut it all out. And like we didn't need any of that extra metal, but it was a way to get started. And you know, a lot of times I'll look at a project and I'll say, Well, you know, at least I need to get the tools on the table. So let me get all the tools together. And that gives me time to think about what tools I'm gonna use. And I'm like, Well, I know I need to at least cut this piece of wood, so let me do that. So I do all the obvious things up front and then it starts to get all the creative parts flowing into more decisions and more concrete decisions. Fantastic. I did have a question about making it, but you already answered that. So that's fantastic. So I'll Tonight, be looking yeah. forward to that. So oh, great, man. Um, Thank you. Yeah, I love that show. I love uh, seeing you on there doing what you do. So um, Thank you. I had a quick question. You put your name on everything. Mm -hmm. It's obviously a good marketing ploy, but What's that how it started? It started because of uh, when, well, the way I started putting my logo on stuff was we did the show Dirty Money uh, in 2011. So literally this time 10 years ago, we were making that show. And um, when we uh, we were making pictures and Instagram kind of just started, everybody on, the, all the young people on the set were like, oh, you got to get on Instagram. So for me, it was had just started, but I guess it was about a year or two old at that time. And I started putting pictures on my Instagram, uh, some of the things that we were making on the show. And I thought, oh, Pinterest was out there too. So Pinterest had bitten a couple images of mine. And I was like, you know what? Nothing goes out without my logo. And I had just made a stencil for the side of my army truck. It was on the wall of my workshop. So I grabbed it and I masked out the address and everything that was also in the stencil. And I just spray painted the rest the logo. And I did that because it was a military truck. So that's why I made it look like a military style logo. Um, and so it was really from that TV show, Dirty Money, when I was taking stills of the things we built. And uh, I just made sure that anything that went on my new Instagram account had my logo in the corner. And then when I went to YouTube, people started stealing my videos. And I was like, now i got to make sure that my logo's on all the things in the shop and not just in the corner or not just at the beginning, not just at the end. They're going to be like on the tools. And that's, that's really where it started. So... I'm a big fan of Bon Appetit, and one of my favorite collaborations that you did was when you made oh, the Brad. outdoor grill with Brad Leone yeah, um, yeah. for It's Alive Going Places. Do you like doing those kinds of projects? Oh, I or love do you it. prefer doing your own kind of thing on your own? I show? love it when I love getting surprised. I, I really love a challenge because if it if it's up to my own devices, I always tend to fall into comfortable projects and projects yeah, that yeah. you know, like oh, I, let me make another. For instance, let me make another. Like I'm making a storage unit, another little storage thing this week, but I'm doing it in a different way. So I'm making these little wire baskets, and uh, I like when people call me and say, Hey, would you do this project or would you collaborate on this thing? Cause it gives me an opportunity to get outside of my own personal comfort zone. And Brad's great. We're going to work on something again soon. We've been chit chatting. Oh, fantastic. Cool. Has he been practicing his welding skills at all? No, no, none at all. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> he just got, he just got a house. So he definitely needs to. Yeah. Hey, you know, one, uh, one last question. Is there anything that the Duresta ice pick can't do? No. There's nothing. It does, it does everything. It's the uses are limitless. It's the ultimate multitasker. It is. <laughs> okay. <That's> it. <laughs> yeah, I've come, I've come to like if you notice on Instagram when people say, like, "Look, look what I did with my thing," I go, "Oh yeah, yeah, oh yeah, it does that too." You know, so that's just a yeah. little joke. That's become like a little running line, like, "Oh yeah, 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 it does that too," yeah. as if I forgot to tell everybody that it you know can pull a washer out of a garden hose or get a you know a battery unstuck.
It's awesome. Cool. Awesome. Yeah. Thanks, Kevin, for joining us. Uh, Thanks for having me. It's been a pleasure to speak with you in person. Kevin, thank you, brother. I really appreciate it, brother. Thank you so much. All right. See you, Kevin. Awesome. So I, I'll we're going to get right into some Q&A. So if you got questions, put them in the chat. Before we do that, um, Jimmy, I, would, I was hoping to just throw out a quick offer to those watching. Um, if you want to join uh, the Makers Mob, we got a deal that we're throwing out here for this live only. It's going to be up for about three days, uh, and then we're going to pull it off. Essentially, about $100 off of the annual membership. Uh, so if you want to learn uh, anything like we had talked about earlier as far as all the tutorials and, and the plans that we got in the Makers Mob, be a part of the community. Uh, join us on, on a live with one of the makers like this. Um, you know, Feel free to take advantage. There's a, a link in the description below. So take a look at that. Um, annual membership for nearly $100 off. And uh, yeah, we'd love to have you part of the community. Uh, Jimmy. Yes? I have a question for you. Is yes. Derek from Malden as funny as I, I think he is? Derek is a very funny dude. We we met when we did Making It 100, which, you know, that's like a, that's a deep cut for the fans. Uh, Making It is the podcast. And when we did episode 100, naturally... Uh, this thing came together very, very, uh, with very little effort. It was really good community, <coughs> a community effort in general. Uh, somebody volunteered the space at, at Converse, and we all went to Boston on a weekend. And that's when I met Derek and several other friends. Uh, you know, I cemented my friendship with Graz that weekend. We met once or twice just before that. But it was a great weekend, and uh, a lot of friendships were made that weekend. And I guess that was in 2016. Yeah, and Derek and I obviously stayed friends, and then we started traveling together. Like I was going to go to London. Derek's like, "Who are you going to London with? Are you traveling with anybody?" I said, "I'm going alone." He says, "Can I tag along?" And then he, and then he's like, "I goes, oh, rooms are so expensive." But I said, "I go, I got a room. Just stay in my room." And so that's how we just started traveling together. And then oh shoot, there's only one bed. <laughs> Doesn't it, Derek go? Derek, Derek always talking about our rituals when we go. We do it. There's a two beds. I. I just, I usually just, I call it my cowboy nap. I just go to bed with my shoes and clothes on and I wake up, <laughs> go to the bathroom, to, ready get ready to for go. the next day. Yeah, ready to <laughs> go. Derek, Derek goes into the bathroom with like all his beauty. Like I literally, like I will pack my bags of deodorant, a toothbrush and the clothes that I need. And Derek comes in. Derek's got like four overnight bags. He's got beard oil. He's got ear oil. He's got bald head oil. He's got treatments. He's got band-aids. He's got... And I just have a toothbrush and a stick of deodorant. And that's literally what I leave with. That's awesome. Uh, so he goes, he goes, you don't have to pack nothing. I bring everything. That's why you don't pack none. Uh, this Jeremy Specie, Spess, I don't know how you say his name. I love the quote. If you want Derek to shut up, point a camera at him. Is that true? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That's what I say. <laughs> we want Derek to shut up, point the camera at him. He gets, but Derek has really come out of his shell on, on, this, on this shoot. He's becoming really talkative and he's he is really enjoying himself and uh, you know the first couple of days are uncomfortable for anybody if you're not used to being filmed but mm -hmm. he he really really has come out of his shell and you know we're each developing our character in the world of the show you know we're being ourselves as much as possible but you know in the dynamic of the friendship on camera there's like a little bit of like each one of us are developing a certain little character and uh derek's character is super funny and, and you know i'm supposed to be the mean one that's always mad that things aren't getting done and uh pat's just a physical comedian and uh graz is like a is like a little like intellectual goofball comedian and uh i uh, and jackman is kind of more of like the cerebral engineer kind of guy yeah but we're all we're all just slapstick idiots at the end of it. <laughs> I, I I can't wait to see that. Um, we've got a question here from Phil Olson. Uh, when you were young, what made you become excited about making things? Well, you know, I I say this often in other interviews. I it's just it was just always so natural to me. It was almost like when I went to elementary school and and grade school. It, to me, it was like, oh, you don't you don't use a jigsaw. You don't have a hakalu gun. Your dad doesn't let you play with razor blades, you know, from the time you could think about it. <laughs> um, it just was always so natural to me, and it wasn't – and I took to it. I could see other people growing up in a maker environment and deciding they didn't want to do that. But me personally, I grew up in a maker environment with my dad, and it's just, it just was – it just stuck. And it wasn't even a decision. It wasn't even a, a thought like, oh, I need to go and do this. It just, it's just what I always did. And mm -hmm. I didn't realize that I was – 
a little bit different or maybe a little bit more advanced than the average elementary school kid until like they're like oh we need something to be like sculpted they're like oh jimmy can do it and i'm like i can can anybody do it you know i didn't know that i was just a little bit more advanced than most of the kids around me that being said there you know i met other kids growing up that were way more skilled than me at uh, you know maybe naturally sculpting or naturally carving and you know those kids always inspired me as well i think of a couple guys i grew up with that were always you know, i grew up with guys that were good with engines and you know, those guys always inspired me like it literally from like the age of eight i would think to myself how does he understand how engines work he's not old enough to have experience to even understand what the hell this thing is <laughs> but you know because of the parents they grew up with that's what they were taught yeah um my son which you saw that video a while yes, back, that was great. Uh, put <laughs> together great. your your box, and he's super pumped, and he's eight years old. So he's kind of he's he's becoming a little little bit of a fanboy of yours as well, which is oh, that's great. And there's an Instagram video of him putting yeah, that up, right? Yeah. yeah, that's I I I, I promoted a couple months ago. Yeah. Um. So I mean, it does start at a young age, which is I mean exactly what you're saying. Uh, Jimmy, you inspired me to up my maker game and tool hoarding. Who has provided that inspiration to you? Um, you know, the community, honestly, the community is, 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 is no help with my, with my addiction because I get calls all the time. It's like, Hey, do you want this machine? If you know, uh, if you don't have the time, I'll deliver it. Just give me an ice pick. And I'm like, all right, you know, like, okay, bring it over. So, uh, it's, uh, it's great. And the community has really encouraged me to, to hoard. And, and that, you know, my, some of my bigger inspirations really are, uh, like Andrew Alexander and, and Eric, you know, like when Eric and Andrew get passionate about something, it's just like, there's no stopping them. Like if they need like, you know, some widget from 1905 or, you know, some steam engine, like it's, they become the Terminator. And, yeah. You know, certain things like that inspire me to try and find and get, get my hands on objects and machines that inspire me as well. And I, like, I have a little bit of a criteria when I buy machines, I always have to be able to make something with them. Even if it's a stretch of an excuse, like I might just make one thing one time with them. But I'm always thinking in terms of the website and how I could, you know, die stamp something over and over again. And, you know, Stu from Yellow Mug, he, he found me this great fly press, which has been incredible, uh, you know, for producing. But stuff like that, like that's a perfect example of, you know, uh, a friend fan finding me something out there and then saying, hey, look. I'm like, oh, that's cool. Sit on that egg until I come and pick it up, you know, yeah. that kind of thing. It's, I mean, do you get that often? People who are fans or friends Every day. that, yeah, that are helping you out in that way. Every day. I mean, I, awesome. I, a lot of times people will send me free printers on Facebook Market that are, you know, somewhere in the country, and I have my fill at this point. Like, I would only collect something unless it was super rare to me, or something that I was very interested in getting. But for the most part, you know, you see a regular Chandler and Price Press, which is obviously, you know, a relic from history, and they should not be ever. They should never be dismantled or thrown away. But a lot of guys is just like, I just need it out of here. And then I'll forward that to somebody that I know might be closer or something. Is there something, this is my own question. Is there something that you don't have that you like, that you want? Um, That's like on like the top of your wish list. Yeah. I, you I, I guess if you, if you search my Facebook marketplace searches recently, a 1967 Cadillac that's not dismantled and that's in perfect condition. Perfect, perfect condition. Yeah, because I have a 1967 Cadillac that looks like it was at the bottom yeah. of the ocean right yeah. next to the uh, <laughs> Titanic, <laughs> which is, in itself is cool. But, you know, to get it roadworthy is just a lot of work that I just haven't had the time for. Yeah. Um, question here from Sean Albertson. Uh, what's a technique you want to learn in the future, a technique or skill or something that maybe you've um, you right. know, it's it's almost like the the everything everything I know is you know is is limitless. So just in general, just learning new techniques is always welcomed. And you know, in any field, whether it's leather working, you know, I I I can do a lot of things, but I'm certainly no expert at leather working. There's so many more things I need to learn. Uh, you know, this I, I am an absolute baby beginner when it comes to blacksmithing. You know, I do spend a lot of time listening to and talking to the blacksmiths that inspire me, like uh, Cliff Dufton and, uh, you know, Jeff Fader and, and John Siriani and those guys. And, uh, you know, whoever else, Liam Hoffman, of course, and, uh, you know, uh, Alex Steele, you know, these guys and Will Stelter, these guys are just incredible talents that, you know, we all get a chance to observe and watch. So, you know, I'm always learning from those guys. So I'd like to do more of that. 
Um, <laughs> here's a good one. What's something you're terrible at? Uh, I always used to say making money, but I'm getting a little bit better at that. Yeah. <laughs> Just a little bit. Just a little bit. Um, Singing, I'm terrible, dancing. I'm terrible at saving money. I don't like dancing at all. Dancing, I find, is like if somebody's like, can we go dancing? I'm like, I'd rather go spend time in the workshop. Yeah. Uh, so dancing is something. Um, I'm really I'm really terrible at relaxing. Like the show ended last night at 8 o'clock, and I welded until about 10 o'clock on a project for my next video. And then I came in the house. I edited till about one in the morning. Then I went and delivered mail that I needed to drop off at a mailbox. And then at about one uh, thirty in the morning, I went for a two mile walk. And then I went to bed. So, <laughs> was that two mile walk just to clear your head? Yep. Yeah. I have this little routine that I do around the neighborhood. So at the end of everything, I usually go for a long walk lately. Yeah. 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 Definitely. Definitely helps. Yeah. Uh, Blair Vesey, I would like to help you rebuild civilization after the fall. How do I apply to join your cult? Just Google my address <laughs> and show up with a rake. <laughs> or a pitchfork. And make sure you have a razor blade in your pocket. I can't stand it when I work with somebody and they don't like you borrow my razor blade. Yeah. Two things, like, if you ever go to a meeting, keep a razor blade in your pocket and don't ever take the pen out of the architect's hand. If the architect takes the pencil out of your hand while you're discussing the project, don't work with that guy. And that's like, I'm telling everybody right now, in the, the next couple of years, you're going to say, you know, I went to do a consult with an architect. And while we were explaining what we're building, he pulled the pencil out of my hand. That is the moment where you say, you just slowly get out of the job. You're like, oh, I got I got hired by my aunt to rebuild the porch. You can't do this job. And every architect in the world is going to know it's a punishment that I started. That if they yank the pencil out of your hand while they're discussing their idea that is like impossible to make, and then they yank a pencil out of your hand, <laughs> the power move is to just not work for them. Thank you, Jimmy Dresta. <laughs> um, let's see. Oh, Matt. This is from Matt from Malden. Do you prefer projects or projects? How do you say projects or projects? I'm well, you say projects. I say projects. That's good. Yeah. Like water. I'm from Canada. We things yeah. get distorted once you cross that border. Um, uh, do you prefer projects? Yeah. Well, uh, do you prefer planning a project or making it while I'm in it? You know, I I like to plan a concept. So for me, it's more of like a, an idea. So I'll start working on the idea, and then as the idea starts to develop, so then does the the finished project. Yeah, and I I, I always like like you know like I, I envy April in a way where she can really like lock her brain around some. Um, Hang on, I get a phone call. Uh, April can really lock her brain onto like an idea and sketch it up. And, you know, I can't do that. I just yeah. always have to leave room for, you know, some left turn. Yeah, I, I just feel I just, it out just, as you're doing it. Yeah, uh, you know, and then unless I'm working with a with an architect that actually yeah. has a clear idea and uh, then I just do what they want. And then the decision making process really is just how and what materials. Yeah, because you're um, I mean, a lot of times you'll you'll do um like you'll test it out and you'll do a model and, and kind of like yeah do it a couple times and revise it and then feel it out until you get to what you want it to look like at the end right yep yep i'm uh, telling my my better half that i'm live streaming she's looking for me where are you are you on that walk already uh do you <laughs> still have your metal uh whirly gig yeah, I still have everything that I made pretty much. You know, some of it's like in storage randomly. Some of it's just like leaning on the wall. I do have the Metal Whirly gig. Um, it is uh, on a shelf inside the big rent -a shop I, I rent a big shop. That's where I shoot most of my videos in the grungy shop. And um, so it's hanging up on a shelf in there. Um, we got a couple. We'll take a couple more questions here. Um, and then and then we'll wrap this, this up. Let you get back to... Uh, I don't know if you're going back to working on the show or if you're done for the night. Um, no, I think I'm just going to go back and organize the shop. We left a bunch of tools around and I'm in the middle of uh, trying to solve a problem. Uh, oh, so I'm gonna go solve that problem. Go solve that problem. Uh, let's Nothing see here. Oh, here we go. Uh, Jimmy, can you recommend a basic toolkit for a 10 year old kid? What would you get them started with? I mean, uh, you know, it's funny when I was a kid, I remember my dad got me a coping saw. Hmm. And you could do a lot with a coping saw. I mean, you know, you see they're still, you know, they're still in heavily, they're still heavily used. And and I say a coping saw, but a jeweler's saw, 
is good because you can make really tight turns with a jeweler's saw if you use like a bench fork, which is that like piece that sticks out in front of you mm -hmm. and you can pull down on it. So get get a concept saw. You know, a 10-year-old could really get their mind around a, a good quality. A concept is the is the metal framed aluminum water jetted one. It comes typically in like an anodized red metal. Mm -hmm. uh, they're really, really well made and they're, they're really good quality piece of kit that somebody would, you know, take pride in and, and, um, and you can get fine blades so you could make easy cuts. Uh, you know, it takes a lot of dexterity and a little bit of upper muscle power to upper body strength to, to use a good coping saw. But if you use a fine jeweler's blade, it'd be probably easier for a kid. Mm -hmm. It's also dangerous. I mean, you can really get cut with a jeweler's blade if you're not careful. Yeah, I mean, anything you give a kid, uh, like I mentioned earlier, my son's eight. I have three sons, but my my youngest son is eight, and he's uh, getting into kind of making things. I actually made this, this is my show and tell. I made this oh, knife nice. recently, uh, walking knife. And Ooh. my son is now wants a knife. Um, I'm not going to do a locking knife with him because it's quite in, involved. Yeah. But... Uh, he just the fact that he can cut things. I mean, he borrows this thing and I taught him. But yeah. to everyone who's at, at wondering about getting kids tools, make sure you supervise them and yeah. teach them not to cut. I remember my yeah. dad put me on a jigsaw when I was about eight or nine years old. Yeah. And I somehow stuck my thumb right into the blade and I cut like right down the middle of my thumb here. Oh my gosh. Like deep, like real deep. Like I needed stitches. And my dad just pushed it together and wrapped it with black tape and just laughed at me. Some crazy I glue. Said, I said, I go, I could feel the heartbeat in my thumb. He goes, Yeah, it'll go away. Eventually. <laughs> that yeah. was what he said to me. He goes, yeah. Because you feel it right now. He goes, It'll go away in a couple of hours. It'll be all right. Yeah. And he laughed it off. And so because he laughed it off and I didn't make a big deal of it. Now I, I like in the middle of a sh scene the other day, like I cut my, I cut myself with a knife. Like I try to like poke a hole through something and it slipped and I literally sliced down the side of my finger and I just kept working the whole time. And I just kept wiping the blood off on my shirt, kept working, kept wiping the blood off on my shirt. So when they watch that in the edit, they're going to be like, what the is wrong with it? Um, we've got one, well, maybe we'll take another one after this, but this is a good one. Uh, <laughs> you are stuck on an Island. Who would you rather have with you, Jackman, Pat, Lapgras, or Derek? <laughs> only one? <laughs> you only have one. Oh, man. That's a tough question. That's a tough question. You don't I mean, have to I, answer if you don't want I would to. have to say Derek because Derek's my boy. You know? <laughs> Derek, Derek will be happy enough. <laughs> Derek's my guy. And Derek, Derek, you know, it's funny. Derek – you know, I like I I say this affectionately that I'm a white trash, you know, civil servant savage, and Derek is too, and so the two of us like are always on the same exact page when it comes to like you know bundling wires, like oh get the zip tie, you know, or or you know he working with Derek is exactly like me working with my dad, because my dad like we're just always anticipating each other's moves. It's been years, obviously, since I've worked with my dad. He's retired, but uh, you know, whenever we did handyman stuff together, we were always you know, finishing each other's actions. And, you know, he taught me that, you know, always anticipate mm -hmm. and working with Derek. It's, it's been just like that. It's just, he always knows what I'm about to do and I can always anticipate what he's about to do. So we're always handing each other the tools that we're thinking about. Yeah. So. That's awesome. Uh, I've experienced that before and I haven't experienced that at times and it's frustrating when it's not yeah. happening. <laughs> yeah, you're like, you look, you turn and you're looking like someone's looking like, at their phone and you're like, what are you doing? Watching. You have not been watching me and anticipating my move. You're like, oh, did you need something? Yeah. I'm like, yeah, hey, hand me the screwdriver you're holding. I'm like, yeah. at the point now where I need it. They're like, yeah. oh, oh, here you go. You need a screwdriver? I didn't even know. Yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm just on Instagram. Give me a minute. Uh, can you uh, teach a turkey how to use a bandsaw? Um, <laughs> These are great questions. It depends. You know, it might be possible. <laughs> I don't think so. It might be possible. Stupid pet tricks. I don't think so. Um, my turkey, my turkey follows me around the yard, and it's almost like I make this joke all the time. Like he follows me around, and it's like I have to say something to unlock the spell. And he walks around, and just goes, mah, mah. and I walk it like ten feet, and he walks up me and goes, mah, mah, mah. and he's like, he, I look him right in the eyes, and he's like, help me. <laughs> like if I kissed him on the lips, he would turn into a human or something. <laughs> I don't know what it is, but I, I I feel like there's a human soul inside of the turkeys that walk around my yard, and uh, they just need to be let out. Somehow. They're just des they're desperate for some love from Jimmy. Yeah. <laughs> um, 
I think we're going to wrap it up. It doesn't look like any fresh questions are coming in. So thanks again, Jimmy, for joining us here. Uh, it's been awesome. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Somebody asked me about, I noticed that somebody asked several times about wood from, uh, I get, l- lately I've been getting local wood from a sawmill. And uh, thankfully the television people here are paying for all the wood we've been using for the last several months. So, and a lot of it's recyclable. So we're using it for various props and then we take it apart and we're going to reuse it again. And, uh, you know, so I'm going to have a good stash of wood when they leave because they're like, we're not going to take it with us. So we're going to leave it here. But in general, uh, you know, we pay a little bit more for wood lately. It's it's obviously not convenient, but there is a sawmill nearby and I use a lot of wood from the sawmill. So it's a lo- like the rough sawn lumber that we coat the inside of the black barn with. It's cheap. Awesome. It's cheaper than your average Home Depot price. Yeah. Which is outrageous right now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, any uh, anything coming up in the store? I, we've got a store link uh, for your site uh, mm-hmm. down below as well. Anything coming uh, up? Maybe? You know, I just did the level magnetized picks. I haven't put them in the store yet because we haven't finished packaging them. I sold a couple directly to some people that reached out to me. Um, they'll be in the store hopefully by the end of, I'll say, let me say the end of next week because there's so much going on. I can't honestly say. I haven't spent time in my store but uh, i haven't spent time at my shop preparing products even aaron who obviously does a lot of the work with me is on the show so aaron is extremely busy doing a lot of the logistics of various mechanical parts that we need and you know yeah it's just everyone's just filled up with that time so uh busy. toolboxes are available at the store the toolbox like you just held up available at the store and uh we're working on a product line which involves that toolbox and several other things like it for a major retail chain you might have heard it on the after show if you listen to making it, but I don't want to announce it till it's a, f- a done deal. It's 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 just in process. It's in product yeah. development, heavily heavily heavy product development right now for a big nice. retail chain that was probably near mostly everybody in the Northeast, so you could walk to that store and get one eventually. Nice, that's yeah. pretty exciting. Yeah. Um, so if you if you guys are tuning in, you're just getting here. Sorry if we didn't get to your question. Um, thanks for joining us tonight. If you don't know who I am again, I'm Adam Hankel from the Makers Mob, and I'll just share this thing with you one more time. Uh, if you don't, uh, if you aren't a part of the Makers Mob, um, we've got a deal on right now. You can join for an annual subscription of nearly hundred dollars off. So uh, just click the link in the description. You click that nice big red button. Um, and join us. We got tutorials. We got uh, plans. We've got an awesome community. We give away prizes every month. Um, Jimmy's got a lot of voiceover videos on there of his YouTube videos. Um, so feel free to take a look at that and join the Makers Mob community. Thanks again, Jimmy, for joining us. Uh, sure. Yeah, it's awesome. And thank you, uh, thank you to Graz, who about ten minutes before you texted me said, "Do you know about this?" I go, "What?" He goes, "You have a live stream in ten minutes." I go, "I do." I go, "Oh yeah, I do." <laughs> Thanks, we're, guys. Yeah, we're heavily involved in trying to solve this problem in the shop. It's it's no biggie. It's just like we're getting close to like, okay, it's doing the thing it's been meant to do for all week, and it's like we're like right at the threshold, and we just have to grind a couple of angles and adjust and add a little bit of motor oil, and then I think we're going to be good. Awesome. So. Well, I look forward to seeing on an Instagram story soon. Thank you, buddy. Thank you, <laughs> yeah. thank you, and thank you everybody for watching. I really appreciate it. Yeah. Thank Thanks, guys. We will see you guys another time. Uh, have a good night, everybody. Do I hang up now? I will press end broadcast. And we are...